theory, one of the most complex attacks to carry out is one that involves the participation of several individuals that have to act in a coordinated way to catch a single prey. African wild dogs form one of the most numerous attack groups in the animal world. The whole clan gets involved. But to achieve their common objective, it's essential that each participating member of the team fulfill its role without deviating from the script even a little bit. It's a game that doesn't admit any mistakes. But it's also true that when there are too many participants trying to do the same thing, the chances of making a mistake are multiplied. The most common mistake is when one of the potential prey discovers a member of the pack in time to save itself. The youngest pack member, or the clumsiest one, or simply the hungriest one. Only one has to make a mistake and let itself be seen or heard in order to negate the advantage of the pack having 19 members, exactly the number that came into play in this case. Dog's intelligence is often considered greater than that of cats or than that of most birds, almost as great as that of monkeys. But to a degree, that's because we're not impartial. We love dogs, our oldest and best friends. The reality, however, is that intelligence shouldn't be measured just in quantity. We shouldn't talk of superiority, but rather of suitability. In terms of survival, each species needs some kind of ability related to its surroundings, like a certain degree of memory or particular brain connections. No doubt, in the case of African wild dogs or hyenas or wolves, we perceive a kind of intelligence that we recognize. The cognitive development of social mammals is based on games, on hierarchy, on emotional connections. But the planning prior to spotting an attainable victim isn't found among dogs either. African wild dogs are almost always on the move and they are as much on the alert for other invading clans that they have to expel from their territory as for a chance to catch something to eat. They patrol territories of up to 200 square kilometers and their way of hunting coincides with their way of life. They're always skulking around. Their coloring helps them to go unseen while on the prowl. Their system follows a very simple concept which, when put into practice, becomes a hunting technique that's hard to beat. Their marching formation changes from single file to one in which they fan out. The only reason they do this is so that they can stay together as they follow the trail of their female leader. The singularities of the terrain, the reactions of their prey, and their experience do the rest. The prey that the lead African wild dog detects, if they don't see them and run away, will soon be outflanked by wild dogs to the right and to the left and be unable to escape. It's a mix of a surprise attack and the classic military tactic of advancing while spread out. The attacks of well-structured African wild dog clans are successful between 75 and 90 percent of the time. They are horrific hunters that devour their prey without any of the pack bothering to kill the victim first. 
That behavior is why they are known as wild dogs. They may seem crueler than other predators, although of course they're not. There are no cruel or kindly animals. Cruelty isn't found in nature. It's only a human interpretation of natural wild behavior. Nonetheless, the way African wild dogs eat their prey has caused a lot of people to feel aversion to them, and they are systematically hunted down and exterminated in many places. In fact, they have disappeared in much of Africa. Come <laughs> on.